<laughs> wow. <laughs> This never gets old. Today we're going to visit one of my absolute favorite places in Copenhagen. But before I show you what it is, I just want to quickly give you a little bit of background. You see, in 1861, the University of Copenhagen had a observatory in the middle of town. They were beginning to have issues with stuff like light pollution and vibrations from the ever-increasing traffic. But the main problem, which I think they have, was the fact that the cupola on that telescope was too small, as telescopes were beginning to grow ever larger. So what they did was they built a new observatory in the outskirts of town, or what was out at the outskirts back then. And that is right up that road. So the new observatory here is actually only 600 meters from the old one, which is why I think they mainly moved, because they needed more room up in the dome. Originally, they had a 280 millimeter um, refractor telescope. A refractor telescope is a telescope where it gets its main magnification from, uh, from a lens, where reflector telescopes are more modern designs used curved mirrors to get the main magnification. They are often a lot more compact, but also a lot more difficult to manufacture. In 1895, only around 30 years after the building was opened, they replaced the telescope with a new and bigger one. This one was a double refractor, meaning they have two telescopes in one. The main one being around 300 and I think it's 90, and the secondary one being 250 millimeters. And that telescope is still here today and in working order. <laughs> wow. <laughs> A little fun fact, when they exchanged the telescope, they had to lower the floor up here in the dome in order to make room for the new and larger telescope. This means that we now have windows protruding off of the floor. So here we have the business end of the telescope and it's an absolute beautiful piece of work. It's quite dark up here, so I'm not sure how well it comes out on camera. But you can see here we have the two separate telescopes. We have the main one over here, which is the 380 or 90. I think it was measured in 2013 when it was restored. This is a secondary one, which is a 250 millimeter. Um, apparently, the Wikipedia was wrong. I'm informed that this is actually a little bit bigger than, uh, than I first thought. The main one was used for observations, and you can see we put the ice piece down here at the end. And the secondary one was used to take um, uh, images by putting a plate in here and then opening up the telescope when you wanted to do an exposure. Just to show how well balanced this thing is, it, you can basically, if I loosen these up, I'm just going to get a hold of it here. It is so well balanced that when I'm not having it locked, I can push this thing around just very effortlessly with my hand. And if I let go, it will stay in that position. It is so well balanced. It's amazing to think that they could balance something this heavy, 200 or 120. So you have these two knobs here where you use to, you have to tighten either the, uh, the, the equatorial axis or the two different axes. Next to them, you have fine adjustments, so you can do fine tuning of the positioning of the uh, of the telescope. Um, on the top you have a um, focusing adjustment, much like you would have on cameras today with a focus ring. Um, and over here you can actually see there are two telescopes. Over here is called extra sight telescopes. One of them is a seeker, so you could get a larger field of view if you want to orientate, figure out where you're actually at. And the second one was for measuring the, the scale, so you could see in which direction the telescope was pointing if you needed accurate measurements of that. Originally the dome was built with manual operation, so there were handles you have to, uh, to rotate in order to either um, open the slit or rotate the dome. Today it's been replaced by an electrical system to make it a little bit more easy. But back then it would have been quite hard work, I would imagine, to, uh, to turn a heavy dome like this. I used to come here a lot as a student. I mean, the telescope up there has shown me Mars, craters on the moon, uh, the moons around Jupiter, the rings of Saturn. So, I think it's safe to say that this place holds a very special place in my heart. Today, this dome is not really being used as the main observatory anymore. The university now has a, a newer and bigger one about 50 kilometers outside of town. The building today is mainly being used for office spaces, and there's not really any significant science going on up in the cupola. It's still open from time to time when uh, 
the public can come in and, and have a look or special viewings like the one today. But that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you guys in space.